Shalom, brothers and sisters, and welcome to part two of this series concerning the house of Abraham, the house of Isaac, the house of Jacob, the house of the twelve sons, and the house of Yahusha and Yahuwah. And in this part, we're going to cover the house of Isaac. And if you missed the first, if you missed part one and part one and a half, we, we covered the house of Abraham. Part one and part one and a half, we covered one law for Yahshua and one law for the stranger. That lays the foundation of this series. So you, if you haven't seen part one and part one and a half, you must go see it and watch the entire video and take notes so that you can go back and verify all this information, brothers and sisters that you may not be deceived of anyone because what I'm saying here you can read yourself and discern yourself with the spirit of truth upon you believe not every spirit test that spirit to see if it is of the most high brothers and sisters so it's it, we also covered we are the most high's inheritance and they are our inheritance in part one and a half so it's very important that you go watch that series, both, both um, videos, before this one. Now in this video, we're going to cover Isaac's household, and we're going to go into a, a little bit of the free and the bond, so that you can start seeing this dual thing happening with the Gentiles, and you'll, you'll see it happening with us, free and bond. And you'll start to discover that when we was in every captivity not just when we went into our, came out of misery I and mean, went into our land but when we was in captivity every last one we've always had handmaids and servants with us during those times and we're going to take a look at that as well and when we get to the video the house of jacob but some of you already understand what i'm saying you you already know You've already put this together from my update video, but I had to make this video to explain that update video, that important update video I put out. And I thank the Most High for allowing me to put this out, even during my purge. But this is necessary to keep some of you from falling for wickedness and all manner of lies and deception. Now, Here's a question that goes along with this series. Would you want some wicked heathen Gentile all up in your house underneath the excuse they don't have to be underneath their covenant so they can wear whatever they want to wear in front of you and your husband, in front of you, you and your wives, your children, in front of all your, your, your all of Zion. Would you want to walk down the street all all hookered out, looking like they selling? And they probably would be trying to sell themselves. Prostitution. Would you want men being with men in your land and women being with women and them hitting on you and, and your children and the lesbians hitting on the, your children and your wives? The gay men hitting on the, the husbands and, 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 and your sons and your cousins. and Would you want all that wickedness going on in your land? No. So in the Most High's brilliance, he made one manner of law for us as well for the stranger. That they won't have no excuse when they stand before his throne. And if they stand before his throne, if they're not underneath the covenant as well, they'll be able to say, well, Father, you, you know, you told your children that that covenant wasn't for us. So how can we be, uh, you know, held accountable for all this? We're not, you didn't give the covenant. We're, we're, we're not partakers of the covenant, like they said. You know what, uh, 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 you're right. Come on in with your filthy foul self. 
and bring that pig meat and lobster with you. You think the Most High going to go for that? That ain't the Most High. In his brilliance of his law, such commandments, he's covered everyone. He's There won't be no excuse you could say before his throne room. That's why Paul said, oh, those who are without law will perish without law. If they're in your land, they're going to be perishing without the law. And those who have the law will be judged by the law. So you don't have no excuse either, Zion. One law for us, one law for them as well that they have to follow. And I, uh, I covered this as well when in Acts 15 when Paul and them came together. For those who didn't watch part one and a half, when Paul and them came together, they gave them milk. They started them off with milk and said, hey, they got Moses being taught in all those synagogues in those areas. Start them off with this milk and they'll learn the rest of, little by little when they get, you know, as they as they go along. That's what that discussion was about in Acts chapter 15. It had nothing to do with saying, oh, the Gentile just got these four little things they have to follow. And that's it. That's churchianity, lying to the masses because right after that verse after they gave them those few little things to follow they told them look they got Moses being taught up in those synagogues over there they will learn the rest over there that's what that meant so they said okay let's give these little infants milk to feed on and they will grow in faith and learn the, the rest later don't put all that burden upon them. The law is not a burden, brothers and sisters. It's a burden if you throw it all on someone's shoulders all at once, which was being done by these Pharisees in those areas, right? The devout. They was they was throwing they was trying to throw that huge rock upon them. On top of a baby. And the baby can't handle that weight. They was trying to feed the baby steak. That the baby can't digest that steak. He His stomach ain't ready for that. He, he don't even have teeth yet. To bite and chew and, and, and mash it up right. He has to learn all these things. One, uh, one step at a time, little by little as he grows. So this was the heavy understanding they had while they had that discussion in Acts chapter 15. And they, they looked at them, you know, let's not put all this upon them. It's too much for them. Give them a little bit at a time. little bit at a time that they may understand so that's what this series is about is explaining to you and I know that Paul went to our people in those areas the, the Gentile Hebrews whether the north or southern kingdom scattered in those areas I know he went to them by now we all know that now but there was Gentiles of the other nations that were also inquiring about the word and coming to the word because they were seeing the light shine the word of the most high was taking effect in those areas and people were coming to that they were seeing the holiness they were seeing the righteousness and saying oh man i got to come i got to come to the most high i got to come to these people they were still coming to him in those areas so yes you have the gentiles of their people being talked about there as well because the father talk about them in our law statutes commandments and with abraham's household um they was there that he was being his household was being built before the covenant even came to him and they all took part of that covenant and we covered all that 
and that all passed down to Isaac and his household. So let's go. Let's start with uh, with that understanding. Let's start in the book of uh, Genesis, chapter twenty-six, and we're gonna focus on yes, Abra- uh Isaac had servants. Now Isaac had Isaac was given servants when Abraham died. That great household that Abraham built it up with all his servants who took part in that covenant, who already knew the promises and the, the law, statutes, commandments were passed down to his household. They wasn't a hurt to his household. They didn't come come over and relax and and uh, stretch their Gentile legs and, and started putting on Gentile the other nation's ways in, in the house of Isaac. They continued on taking part of the covenant continued on being righteous and holy in this household and we're going to see uh, Isaac gain even more servants while he was uh, in the land of the Philistines and uh, this is Genesis 26 and 1 and there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham and Isaac went unto Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. And Yahweh appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Mizraim. Dwell in the land which I shall tell, tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed I will give all these countries. And I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. So he's still giving Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the twelve sons the seed, his seed, the promises and the oaths. And they are to be the head of those promises and oaths. He has not dealt so with any other nation, but any other nation that joined unto us, they must learn from us and follow us, brothers and sisters. And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven and will give unto thy seed all these countries and in thy seed shall all the nations be blessed and this is where they hate the most high at they don't hate me it ain't me they hate they persecute me all day long hallelujah they hate him and the most high gonna deal with them if they don't repent of this, of the evil things they're saying against the father. And in thy seed, in the seed of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the twelve sons, all the way through, shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. You should be focusing on the good of the word and being a blessing to your, to yourself, of course, and of your household and any other nation that want to join themselves unto you if they want to leave of their heritage and their cultures and say I'm coming to the heritage and culture of the most high we know they're going to do that in the future because the scriptures say they're going to seek let us go and learn the ways of the most high let's go up to his, his holy mountain they're going to do that they're going to seek his face but you are to change the sa- the same plan of the Most High because you feel a certain type of way. His plan will stand whether you like it or not. And I'm going to believe him rather than anyone else. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. is solid. So right here, Isaac, was in Gerar of the land of the Philistines and his wife was fair to look upon and they they told the king about her and and Abimelech looked out the window and he saw Rebecca sporting with uh, I mean Isaac sporting with Rebecca his wife and then he was like uh, wait a minute hold up you you said that that was your sister and this is your wife and so he made a commandment here to everyone in the land to um, not touch Isaac and his wife or anyone else in his household or his possessions. Um, or they will be put to 
death. Put to death. Now this is the part we're gonna we was we're gonna focus on because we're just focusing on what he had. The the servants of uh, Isaac. Then Isaac sold in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold, and Yahweh blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. The Most High is blessing him, for he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds and great stores of servants. Y'all see that? He had great stores of servants, and they had positions in, in inside of his household. They had positions inside of their household. Just as we saw with Judith. Judith and her handmaid. There was a handmaid in her household who was over all her house. She took that handmaid with her. When she cut off that head of the general, Holofernes. I think I said that name right. <laughs> and the Most High used her to save Zion. Abraham had a head servant, Eleazar. He was over all the possessions of his household. King Saul had an uh, Amalek, an Edomite, in his army. King David had a Hittite captain of his guard over men of Zion and strangers. They've always been a part of our house. One way or another, brothers and sisters, whether you like it or not, the father likes it. He included them. This is his narrative no, and no one else's. It's his narrative that he gave us an inheritance from the other nations to serve us, to be our helpmate. They're like a wife, a helpmate. That's their position in place. We are like a wife to the most high. That's our position in place to him. He's the head over all. And he chose us down here on earth to be the head over our brethren, to lead in God as the oldest son. That's like um, you have an oldest. And let's say you got your, your oldest son and you got three other, two, two more sons and a daughter, right? When you leave the house, don't you lay down the law to the, to the oldest one? And when you come back, if anything is messed up, don't you go to the oldest son and say what, what you was doing? Why did you let them do this and the other? And then the oldest son going to be chastised. And of course, the other three going to have to pay for their crimes as well. They're going to be lined up to get their weapons for what they done. But he going to whip you because you was in charge of them and you let them go buck wild. Why would you let a heathen come into your land, a Gentile come into your land and go buck wild? No. Once the law went in from your mouth to your son or your daughter, if she's the oldest, because, you know, the oldest in the household gets the um, is the one that's told. To be in charge over the children, right? You're going to, once you lay down the law to that, el the oldest one, you expect the oldest one to, to take care of those children in the household and do the right thing and teach them while you're gone, right? It's the same story the most I put in us as a as parents, as teachers to our children, it's the same story over and over again. This twofold story. It is happening between the Most High and His children on earth and us and our children 
And whoever we're bonded to or with our over, if we're the head of it, we must be the head and leading guide and keep the other ones in order. That's your job, Zion. The other nations need us. You see what they're doing without us. Do you see what they're doing without us? Do you see the horror, the whoredom? Do you see the destruction of the whole world taking place? Destruction of hearts, minds, bodies. Of not only man, but of the animals, the insects, the seas. All of it is dying because you fail. You fail to be the head of the household. The head of the earth. You're the righteous he has chosen you to be the head of this earth. And you must teach your brothers and sisters your righteous and holy ways. And in our land there will be nothing but righteousness and holiness flowing forth from us and who's tied to us. Whether it be the Mizraim tied to our land and the Syria tied to our land, which they will be in the future. He's, he's preparing them for that right now. Or whether it be us and, and uh, whoever else is in our land. They will be righteous and holy. You will not allow your uh, brothers and sisters to, to uh, do that which is wicked. Because you're going to have love for them. You're going to treat them as a, one born in a land. So the father put you in charge of these other children on, on, and you need to be the head and be the adult. Why? Why he's gone, right? And when he comes back and sees that you did a good job, he's going to reward you and give a good report. And he's going to reward those children for being good children. Individually. And if one of them was wicked and He's going to chastise them, their wickedness, you know, their wickedness. And if they refuse, that one refused to repent and change. That one there will, will be kicked out the house. You see this same thing going on in your own households that the Most High is doing, right? So we're focusing on the stores of service that's underneath Isaac's household taking part of these covenants that they may not have any excuse. Let's go to the book of Jasher. Bear witness to the, to the same thing taking place. Uh, this is Jasher 28. And we see right here at the death of Abraham uh, Isaac went to the land of uh, the Philistines and the Most High increased them here we're just mostly going to focus on the servants that he had so right here you can read the same story that happened in Genesis with a little bit more detail and you can see that once he was discovered uh, the king commanded that they should dress them in princely garments. He was as a prince in the land. You know how Joseph went into the land and became a prince in the land underneath Pharaoh in Mizraim? Isaac was as a prince over there. They dressed him in princely garments as if he was a son and make, and, and, and make them ride through the streets of the city. Remember Joseph rode through the streets of the city as well? And proclaim before them throughout the land, saying, This is the man and this is his wife. Whoever toucheth this man or his wife shall surely die. Same story. And Isaac returned with his wife to the king's house, and Yahweh was with Isaac, and he continued to wax great and lacked nothing. Nothing. And right here, uh, Abimelech said unto Isaac, Behold, the whole earth is before thee. Dwell wherever it's, it may seem good in thy sight. 
Remember Joseph came and got us and brought us to the best land in Mizraim? Uh, Goshen. So he, he, he dwelt wherever he desired, right? Whatever's good in his sight. Whatever whatever land you want, you know, you want to build build your um, house on. What? It was his. And Abimelech gave Isaac fields and vineyards and the best part of the land of Gerar to sow, reap, eat the fruits of the ground until the days of the famine should have passed by. This is the goodness of the Most High we see over and over again with his chosen people. And Isaac sowed in that land and received a hundredfold in the same year and, and Yahweh blessed him. And the man waxed great and he had possessions of flocks, possessions of herds, and great store of servants. So he got servants from Abraham when he passed away. But he increased in servants while he was in the land of Gerar. Y'all see this? So we had many nations already tied to our households and great positions. They was running our stores and, you know, they was running our, our farms and running our cattle. And they was with us running all these things. Running our households with us. Whether a uh, men servant or maid servant. And they was running it in holiness and righteousness because the Most High gave them to us. We didn't just walk up and say, Most High, give me these people. The Most High gave them us. And what he gives is a good thing. We read that in scriptures when, he, when the Most High said, Rejoice in the good things that he gave you. He gave you a good thing. And he's going to prepare that good thing in holiness and righteousness to serve you right. Put it all together. Here, little they're little line up on line, precept upon precept, brothers and sisters. This is what we're focusing on. Bringing out the house of Isaac and his great possessions. And knowing that the promises were given to Isaac and his household. Whether they was a Gentile converted, proselyte, or whether they were bought with money to be a, a man, man servant or a man a, a, a man servant or a maid servant, or whether they came in by captivity into our household to be hewers of wood or drawers of water, or whether they're going in hard down bondage and, you know, busting up rocks and digging ditches on in our land or whatever else. Whether free or bond, they will take part in the covenant in our land that no unrighteousness may be done in our land of us or them. Get understanding while understanding is here, brothers and sisters. Uh, let's go to Jasher 31. And we're going to establish Isaac giving uh, Jacob his possessions. Well, actually, he gave Jacob and Esau his possessions when he died. Oh, this, we ain't got to that part yet. <laughs> this is when Rebecca and Isaac sent Jacob some servants to help them. I forgot about that part. Sorry about that, brothers. Let's, let's cover that before we get to Isaac giving his possessions away, passing them down. And Rebekah hastened and sent 72 men from the servants of Isaac to meet Jacob on the road. For he, for she said, peradventure Esau may make war in the road when he meets him. So this is when Jacob went to Laban's house and, and he gained much cattle, uh, gold, silver, and servants. He had a great household and he, and he took Rebecca and he took Ray, Rachel and Lay, and he left. And Laban sent some messengers to Esau, telling Esau, hey, Jacob is coming, going back to the land of Canaan, and this is what he did to me. This is his 
transgressions against me. And Esau was wroth and he, he, he remembered his hatred for him. And he rose up with 400 men and was coming after Jacob. And Rebekah and them found out and sent 72 men from the servants of Isaac to meet Jacob. And these servants actually stayed with um, Jacob, just as Deborah stayed with Jacob and his wives. Deborah was Rebekah's uh, handmaid, and she stayed with Jacob in the household. But who was those servants? Let's take a look at those servants that came. And Jacob made these two servants. He divided his camp into two parts, brothers and sisters. And he, he gave those two servants that came from Isaac's household charge of those two camps that he divided. Because he was scared, you know, if Esau prevailed that he would kill his whole household. So at least one of the households would escape. This is Jasher 47 and 15. And Jacob and his sons and. Oh, this is the part right here. Oh, this is the part when. I must have missed that scripture somewhere. Yeah, that was a little bit further up. Let me let me go grab that. Okay, this is where I was talking about. And actually it was one chapter down from chapter 31. This is Jasher 32, verse 25, 24. And Jacob ceased praying to Yahweh because he was scared of Esau. He was scared of Esau. And Jacob ceased from praying to Yahweh, and he divided the people that were with him, with the flocks and, and the cattle, into two camps. And he gave the half to the care of Demeset, the son of Eleazar, Abraham's servant, for, for a camp with his children. And the other half he gave to the care of his brother, Elianus, the son of Eleazar, to be for a camp with his children. He put these two in charge of these camps. I just wanted to show y'all the positions, the great positions these Gentiles had in our households. The charge that they have over the households. He entrusted the sons of Eliezer, the head servant of Abraham's household, with his household when he divided it into two camps. Y'all see that? So they too rise up in mighty positions within our ranks and within our walls. This is another part of the story that y'all need to see and hear and read that you may understand the fullness of the Most High's grace and mercy. Not only to us, but through us to the other nations. As promised through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who is the head of their households? Head of the, we're the head of the world, and by us the nations will be blessed. They become a part of the covenant promises and the blessings given to us. They overflow from the Most High in this order. There's a holy order that you must understand and see, brothers and sisters. And that holy order is in your own household if you're married. Your husband the head, the wife to help me, the children that y'all raise up so that they can go out and build their households the same way. You see the same pattern. And anyone joined on to us, whether free or bond, partakes in the holiness and righteousness of our household, in their households, and so on and so forth. Now the ones that won't, you're supposed to put those away because they're the tires. They're the one that's going to get you all caught up in sin. 
They're going to tempt you. They're going to do whatever they can to, to kill you. We're right along with them. They're the dead. They love their own. They, they're going to try to kill you just like they're dead. But those who got life going to try to save you and, and bring life abundantly to you. You know them by their fruits. Now let's go down to Jasher. Um, 47. Jasher 47. Let's see if I can get there quickly. Now, now let's get into what Isaac gave Jacob and Esau. Right here says, And Jacob took all that Isaac had left in the land of Canaan, the cattle, and the property, and he placed them in two parts before Esau and his sons. Now this is just of Isaac's possession. Remember, Jacob had great possessions when he came out of the land of, of uh, Laban. Great stores of servants. And so when Isaac died, he placed all of Isaac's possessions. Now remember, um, those two sons were a part of Jacob's household now because they stayed with him uh, after Isaac sent those two sons that were uh, Eliezer's sons. They stayed with Jacob, part of his household. And now they're dealing with what was left of Isaac's uh, uh, possessions. And he brought that before Esau and his sons. And he said unto Esau, Behold, all this is before thee. Choose thou unto thyself the half which thou wilt take. And Jacob said unto Esau, Hear thou, I pray thee, what I will speak unto thee, saying, Yahweh, Elohim of heaven. And earth spoke unto our fathers, Abraham and Isaac, saying, Unto thy seed will I give this land for an inheritance forever. Now, therefore, all that our father has left is before thee, and behold, all the land is before thee. Choose thou from them what thou desirest. And so Esau was like, he got to think about this. Do I want the riches or the land? He went consult neighbor youth, neighbor oath the son of Ishmael and uh, Ishmael told him to take, I mean, Nabioth told him to advise him to take the possessions and leave the land of Canaan to him. And so uh, right here we see what took place. And Esau rose up and returned to Jacob and did all that Nabioth, the son of Ishmael, had advised. And Esau took all the riches that Isaac had left, the souls, the beasts, the cattle, and property, and all riches. He gave nothing to his brother Jacob. And Jacob took all the land of Canaan from the brook of Mizraim unto the river Euphrates. And he took it for an everlasting possession and for his children and for his seed after him forever. Jacob also took from his brother Esau the cave of Mitchpelah, which is in Hebron, which Abraham had bought from Ephraim for possession of a burial place for, for him and his seed forever. Jacob was already wealthy. He already had much service and he already had some of the servants from Isaac, from Abraham in his household already. So, um, Esau got some of those servants that passed out from Abraham to Isaac, brothers and sisters. So now we know a little bit more to this story. All right. Where are we going to next? Let's see. Uh, verse 30. Okay, Esau took all that his father had left him after his death from his brother Jacob, and he took all the property from man and beast, camel and donkey, 
oxen, lambs, silver and gold, stones and dillium, and all the riches which he which had belonged to Isaac, the son of Abraham. There was nothing left which Esau did not take unto himself from all that Isaac had left after his death. So now you're seeing the character of Isaac. I mean Esau. His character, he, he's, he ain't left nothing. He didn't give his brother not one piece of the riches. He took it all. Just as scripts say, would you not have left a grape? He takes everything. He don't want no one to have nothing. That's why he saw it's the end of this world. He, he He's taking everything right now. No one will own nothing. You won't own your house, your car, your you don't own it now. Your houses, your property, your land, they own it all. They own it all. He's greedy. He's a vile, wicked man. If you want to find Esau, that's, follow what the scripts say about the man and you'll find him. It's not hard to find him. No matter what color he is, you will find Esau and all, his, all the people that's down with him that bear the same fruits as him. So, uh, now we understand that part of the story, brothers and sisters. So let's get into the free and bond portion of this video. And for that, we got to go to Galatians first. Now, remember, the father said Abraham would be a blessing unto all nations right here in Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 uh, verse 12 and the law is not of faith but the man that doeth them shall live in them Hamashiach have redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. He redeemed us from the curse, the curse of the law, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the nations through Yahusha Hamashiach. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He said not. And to seeds as of many but as of one. And to thy seed which is Hamashiach. Hamashiach made a new covenant. And in him is the promises, covenants, you know, everything restored in perfection in him by faith. For you are covered, your sins are covered by that sacrifice, brothers and sisters. And all who believe can and will take part in the covenant. No one will have no excuse on that day to say before the Most High, Well, your covenant was just for the, for the seed. No, you are joined on to the seed, joined on to the promises. Though it, be, it was given to us, but you must take part in it as well by faith. So right here, Where it's saying uh, in Corinthian, I mean uh, Galatians. Let's start with 23. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith, which should afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Hamashiach, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. 
for you are all the children of Yah by faith in Yahusha HaMashiach. For as many of you as have been baptized into HaMashiach have put on HaMashiach. There is neither Jew nor Greek. Now we know that Paul went to the Hellenized Hebrews in those areas. And he went to the Yehudim scattered in those areas. And he went to the northern kingdom who was scattered in those areas of Galatia. He was talking to them and those who were joined on to us in our households or took part of the covenant and by faith alone. There is neither Hebrew nor Gentile. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Hamashiach. And if you be Hamashiachs, then are you Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, deferred nothing from a servant, though he be master of all. Y'all see what this? It's not that hard to understand, brothers and sisters. Whether free or bond, one law given to the to us and to the stranger. Let's go to first Kings. Take a look at who else King Solomon prayed for. This is first Kings chapter eight. We're going to read 41 through 43. King Solomon prayed for Yehuda first. At the beginning of this chapter. I mean Yasharal. He prayed for all the congregation of Yasharal. Focusing on uh, the 12 tribes first. And then he goes, he's expounding on the stranger right here. He says, moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people, Yasharal, how plain and simple that is. This don't need no interpretation. Moreover, concerning a stranger that is not of thy people, Yasharal, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake. For they shall hear of thy great name, and of thy strong hand, and of thy stretched out arm, when he, when he shall come and pray toward this house. Hear thou in heaven from the, hear, hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name, to fear thee as do thy people, Yahshirah, and that they may know that this house which I have built it is called by thy name. Whether near or far, brothers and sisters, whether free or bond, they can take part of this covenant, whether in our land with us, in our households, or in our land, living in our land with, in their own households, being free. They can partake in the covenant, whether outside of our land, just outside of our land, or way across the country, or way across the earth. Whether near or far, whether free or bond, they can take part of the covenant by faith alone and belief in the Father in heaven. He covered all of this. This is not a Gentile thing from some religion. This is from the Most High. He covered all the bases, brothers and sisters, all of the bases. That no one would have no excuse. Let's take a look at uh, Genesis. Let me see. 
Let me go get it. And let's take a look at the blessing that Jacob received right here in Genesis 27. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come near now and kiss me, my son. And he came near and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of a field which Yahweh have blessed. So he thought that was Esau because he smelled like a field because Esau was a hunter and he felt his skin and him. And uh, he felt the hair of, uh, you know, on, of that lamb's skins that he put on his arms. And he's blessing him. Therefore, Elohim give thee of the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be master over thy brethren and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee and curse be every one that curse of thee and blessed be he that blesseth thee. And it came to pass as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father that Esau his, Esau his brother came in from his hunt. So we don't need to cover that part but this is part of the blessing the good thing that the father blessed us with. You think he wouldn't prepare the other nations to serve us in holiness and righteousness? He's going to bring in an unholy heathen into your households. That ain't the most high, y'all. And those that won't bow down, lake a fire for them. They're, they're disobeying the will of the Father. And they, they will go there. But this will come to pass. Because we're the eldest. We're, we're the older. We got to take care of our inheritance we got to take care of our brothers and sisters of, uh, of our nation first and of them as well. As you can see, the Most High is not a respecter of persons when it comes to his word and his will and his covenants, brothers and sisters. So whether we were free or bond, we had Gentiles come into our land with us when Jacob and we're going to go over that as well when Jacob and, and, and his 11 sons was called into the land of Mizraim them and their households which his household was great with many servants some he gained by possession uh, conquering some he gained by trading cattle and goods for for some servants. Some was given to him, right? But mostly, he, you know, he traded cattle and goods to to uh, gain a lot of those possessions. And he got some servants from Isaac as well. His household was Jacob's household was great at that time, brothers and sisters. And they went into the land of Goshen. So we already had handmaids and servants in the land of Goshen with us. And that free group, that mixed multitude came out with us, brothers and sisters. That's, that's the free and bond side of our servants, our Gentiles, our inheritance that you need to look at and see. In every captivity, in every land we went to, we always had Gentiles tied to us. They was always with us. In every captivity as well. Part of our households. They've always been with us. And I'm not advocating the mixing of. Uh, our seed and their seed. I'm showing you where the fathers always had their seed inside of our um our houses and our homes and in different places in authority and whether they were free or bond they were they were underneath the covenant with us no excuse will be made and you will see today 
that same free and bond situation occurred with us. In the land of Mizraim, there was Levites always free. They never went into hard bondage. You always had a group of free Hebrews while some of us was in, in hard bondage, right? You see it in, uh, in Mizraim. You see it with when we went to Babylon. The Most High took the majority of us into uh, captivity into Babylon under Nebuchadnezzar. And there was a governor sent to govern over uh, our land. But there were farmers and then the poor left behind. Though they was underneath the hand of the um, the governor, they were still free to to do, you know, to, to observe the law, such commandments. They were still free to grow their food and everything in their land. Not to say that they didn't have to bow down to the wishes of the governor, you know. They still was underneath the hand, but the rest went into captivity. We see this with the Medes and the Persians as well. The same thing with the Greeks. Some of us was killed, murdered, raped. Had, you know, all manner of torture devices used on us. But some of us was free and, and, and still in our land. During the Greek captivity. And then the Romans, of course, took over. We had the same free and bond story off and on doing that as well when you put all these different scriptures together here a little there a little you see this story unfold the free and bond taking place all the way through from the very beginning even now today you see some of us being free over here even though we're underneath the hand of some governor of a whatever land we're in but then you still see some in hard bondage and, and facing and getting it. You know, they still getting beat, raped, brutalized. We, we, seen the, we see the same story off and on through this 2,000 year desolation from our land. It was off and on at different periods of time. And in different nations, you'll see this story unfold. I'm not lying, brothers and sisters. You'll see the free and bond within us while we're in captivity or underneath the hand of some other ruler. You can read all this yourself. When you start reading everything all over again, all of this is going to unfold. You're going to see this huge story unfold. And you're going to see the kingdom of the Most High in that story, in your own households and in the house of Yasharal. So, with that said, brothers and sisters, we're going to get into the household of Jacob, part three, and the, son, and the 12 sons. We're going to go over some things during this series, and you're going to see all this unfold with Jacob and the 12 sons and their households until Hamashiach came. And then we're going to go over Hamashiach's household. In part four, all the way up to the Most High's final household. And within, within the son's household, you're going to see a spiritual house and a flesh house. It's going to be twofold. Remember, the Most High's kingdom is of the spirit and no flesh will dwell in that. But you're going to see in the kingdom of Yahusha, there's going to be a spiritual side of the kingdom and it's going to be a flesh side of the kingdom. There's going to be some of us caught up and changed and be mighty men and judge the 12 tribes of Yashabal. And then you're going to see us in the flesh ruling over all the nations and, and judging all the nations in the flesh and having children and multiplying as the seed uh, of the sands of the sea as scripture said we would. You're going to see all of the Bible prophecies starting to come together and unfold. So I do recommend y'all go back and listen to some of my Bible prophecy videos. Just type up um, Bible prophecy 
on my channel. Go to my channel. Click on that little hourglass on my channel next to my videos. Video options and type in Bible prophecy and those videos will come up. And go over them. Take notes. Now, some of the videos, you might hear me say JC's name. Ignore that. that that's I got to redo those videos without those names. You might hear G-O-D being spoken or J-C being spoken. That, that's back then before I grew into the the names uh, or got a full understanding of why not to use those names. Y'all understand? So, yeah, you're going to hear some stuff like that. You may even hear some other stuff in those videos. Bring that to my attention. Because when I redo those videos, I'm going to uh, take all that out and with the new Bible prophecy videos I'm working on. And I'm going to put those out on my new channel. So with that, brothers and sisters, I'm going to say Shalom. Thank you all for tuning in. Get an understanding why you can. Because we're seeing a famine for the word happening within this awakening. They're turning to men and women out on here who wasn't told to teach this word and they're they're doing the evil work y'all wonder how the majority of the hebrews are being gathered i've been telling you on this channel how they're being gathered and i've been warning you and uh if you if you choose to stay with them that's between you and the most high you will be deceived some way. You'll never come into the fullness if you stay with these same people I'm warning you about on here. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You will be deceived in something. Though you know much about this, that, and the other, you'll never come into the perfection. You'll never cross over because you got, uh, you're working off of oil that they're feeding you. Not the oil of the Most High, which lasts forever. Shalom.